Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COB. I'm Juliette Sarli along with Danny Akuya. First time seeing you this yes, 2024. Yes, first time. Absolutely. And what a day. <laughs> uh, we are watching the markets. Well, at some point we were going to have the correction and it looks like we are having at least a sell off today with the SIBO 200 off by just over 16 points or around a one spot 16% and the ASX also currently off by about 79 points and just over 1%. Yeah, a Tuesday shellacking as you put it. So a four week low mining and energy stocks under pressure, but really just every single sector, all 11 are in the red. Um, we've got a, a lot of weakness coming through as well from the healthcare stocks, utilities, and even IT, which was holding up okay, is also in the red, off by about six tenths of one percent, but up by about one percent over the last five days or so. And and you were also noticing the little Aussie getting a little smacked as well. Yeah, so probably what's moving all of this, and you can see it in the Aussie dollar, it's off. Uh, well, it's around 0.7 percent off, so 66 for 14 currently against the US dollar. It's the mighty bond markets again, and the bond. Bond markets are what really can upset equities and we are seeing bond yields across uh, Australia and other markets uh, overnight, well certainly in the US, they're currently uh, trading higher and I suspect that's what's giving the market a little bit of concern. All right, well, we were also looking at what's happening with the supermarkets. I mean, last week we had Prime Minister Albanese really take task, or he's been doing it for a while, for not passing on those wholesale reduced costs. And now it looks like the ACCC considering suing some of the big supermarkets as well. So um, Coles and Woolworths both being dragged down by this. And it's a sense of potentially breaching consumer law here. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Although, can't help but feel that there's a real whiff of uh, populist politics going on at the moment because we all know that the whole Australia Day thing. But nevertheless, Woolworths are particularly in the line of fire and Coles, I believe, they did drop their prices quite aggressively last week. But let's have a look at some of the sectors because interesting to see energy uh, one of the worst performing sectors and that comes as you're continuing to see the hooty rebels taking pot shots at uh, well some of the major shipping uh, going through there the, the Red Sea but nevertheless selling off across the board and uh, having a look at utilities, I mentioned that was a sector that is under pressure as well. When you look at the sector as a whole, up down by 1.7%, which is actually the worst performing. So potentially this chart not giving us uh, the best pulse check there. We don't have, of course, Origin and a number of the key ones that are dragging on the sector. Let's have a look at what we're seeing with the banks uh, also in the red, all off to the tune of around 1%. Yeah, I just thought it was really interesting to note that the um, banking stocks aren't actually performing quite as badly as some of the other other sectors. But let's have a look at some of the news when it comes to uh, the corporates today. And we did have Rio Tinto's quarterly results. Um, but uh, yes, I'm just trying to remember that off the top of my head, which I can't do. Uh, a quarterly, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a little bit weaker than expected. So down 1.4%. La Visa, of course, uh, had its rating cut by UBS down by about 6%. And Hub24 also coming through with a quarterly report recording inflows of $4.5 billion in the December quarter. And for data three, profit guidance has been lifted there and they have announced that their net profit before tax for the first time of full year 24 is expected to be in the range of 30 to 31 million dollars and that compares to uh, the guidance range of 27 to 29 million dollars which was provided at the October AGM so that one bucking the downtrend today all right, let's get straight to our guest, Martin Crabb from Shore and Partners. Good to see you for the first time in Good 2024. To see you too. Yeah, is it too late to say Happy New Year still? Well, I got told off, I think, on Thursday by someone that told me it was past the statute of limitations, <laughs> to which I replied, after a decade in Asia, I'll start saying Happy Lunar New Year exactly. to you all very soon. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's been a bit more of a cautious start after that rally into 2023, end yeah. of 2023. What are you sort of seeing? What's everyone talking There's about? There's a couple of things at play. One is that December was a lot stronger than people thought it would be. So. You know, some of the small cap, uh, you know, uh, sectors are up sort of 10% in in December. There was a huge rally in Wall Street, the Nasdaq in particular. So I think I think we got a bit carried away with the old Santa rally there in December. 
and we've just sort of come into the new year and maybe a little bit more sober after New Year's celebrations is saying we've probably run a little bit too hard here. We're not really seeing the early stages of the reporting season in the US validating all that enthusiasm. Maybe we take a little bit of money off the table. Uh, China has disappointed. So again, yesterday they were supposed to cut their medium term lending facility rate by 10 bips. They didn't do it. The iron ore price has cracked. It's come from 140 to sort of into the 120s. BHP and Rio are down 8, 8 to 10% on the back of that. They're a big chunk of the market. And also we were closed in the US last night. So today's kind of anticipating probably a you know one a half percent or a one percent drop in the Dow tonight. Yeah. So if we don't get there, we're just going to give some of this uh, back today. So I think a few people are just saying, look, you know, if Wall Street was open, it probably would, would have been down. So we'll just yeah. assume that it was. So yeah. we'll see what happens tonight because this often happens when the US is closed, particularly if it's closed on a Monday. We just kind of, uh, we were one of the few markets, risk, risk markets that people can trade. So they said, well, we'll just sell some Aussie stocks. We'll sell the, the US stocks listed in Australia. So I don't know if you've got, you know, CSL, ResMed, those sorts of brambles, Amcor, James Hardy, those kind of US based stocks generally perform poorly when their market's closed and our market's open. So a few moving parts and, and obviously the, um, a couple of downgrades in the retail sector from UBS. So yeah. I think they, they downgraded La Visa and, um, and also Super Retail, yeah. which had a big bounce yesterday, gave a lot of that back today as well. So yeah. a few, few moving parts. That um, uh, consumer sentiment index from Westpac, when mm. I was reading through that earlier today, Martin, we're down to lows, which are eerily similar to some pretty nasty recessions yeah. going back to the 1990s. Yeah. Um, is that a harbinger of like the whole thing about Australia is going to skip a recession and all of that? I mean, yeah. are people are just being too optimistic? Is their glass <laughs> too half a full rather than empty? I think market participants are optimistic, but the man in the street or the woman in the street is very mm, pessimistic. Absolutely. So that survey shows that people are as, as pessimistic as they ever get. Um, they've actually got this back to the 70s and you, mm. you got the 1990 recession, which was even worse. And, and, and you get down to you know, the 80s, the low 80s, the high 70s. That's about as, as negative as anyone gets, and that's where we are at the moment. But if you overlaid consumer spending on that, it's completely different. So it is not. Even though people are bearish, and when it gets to housing, it's really weird. Um, the average person, or two thirds of people, think that house prices will go up this year, but most people think it's the worst time ever to buy a house. It's like the reading for time to buy a house is 70 or something like that. So no one thinks it's a good time to buy an asset that everyone thinks is going to go up in value. So yeah. how does that make any sense? And again, the, the consumer hasn't worked out that Reserve Bank is done. The consumer hasn't worked out that the next move in rates is going to be down. The consumer's assuming that we've got these high rates for a long period of time. Well, the consumer's also looking at their high electricity bills and all oh, of that. And the high everything bills, yeah, motor insurance. vehicle insurance. Mm, exactly. I got one of those over Christmas. That was a nice little We've got our household insurance. 40% I, I increase shop, in premium. I shop around. It's, it's oh, amazing. you have to. You have the, to. The, the deals that you can actually, you can slice quite a lot off, but yeah. it is pretty frightening. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let alone when you do go, speaking of Woolworths, you go to the grocery store and you go, hello, where did that $50 go? Yeah. 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 Well, you can see why the, politicians are doing what they're doing because they just know that if they can help get inflation down mm. by hook or by crook and that might be accusing people of price gouging or whatever then that helps the reserve bank the last thing any of the pollies want maybe 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 Dutton wants the reserve bank to go higher because then Albo will get kicked out but but the the government does not want the reserve bank to tighten rates any further it would be disastrous for their electoral uh, outlook even though elections are quite a while away um, so if they can get help get inflation down, then that makes the Reserve Bank cut earlier, mm. which again helps the economy along. So that's why they're doing it. Yeah. So if people are not well, potentially looking at, at housing, as you say, but uh, they're looking at gold or you're looking at mm. gold for some, some further upside. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of geopolitical risk. There always is. There's probably less now than historically, but focus on the Middle East, focus on a Trump election uh, and Trump is, uh, in his second um, term will cut military spending, which means the Russians will get the upper hand in Ukraine. There's all this geopolitical stuff out there and it, and it usually scares um, asset allocators and portfolio managers like myself. So you go, right, how do I hedge that out? How do I hedge out um, you know, Hezbollah getting involved and ultimately Iran getting involved in the Middle East? Um, how do I hedge out you know, further, further um, you know, problems in Ukraine? How do I hedge out a bunch of other stuff I can't see? I just buy gold. So we think gold fundamentally from a geopolitical hedge makes a lot of sense, but also in a weakening US dollar environment. So most people are of the view that the Fed's going to cut more aggressively than everybody else. 
certainly more than the RBA and definitely more than the Bank of Japan who are going the other way. Mm. So it makes a lot of sense to be <coughs> to be as, uh, in assets that do well when the US is weak and gold is one of those. So what about uh, digital gold? You catch the flurry of crypto. Yeah, crypto. I'm in the JP Morgan um, yeah, um, camp of calling it a pet rock. You know, Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan Can calls call crypto. It the, the boomer call, camp? Calls, calls that a crypto. <laughs> I've been wrong for the last, I don't know, three $36,000, but yeah, um, I, I did see a strategist in the UK who said 50% of your uh, liquid alternatives in gold and 50% in crypto. So he says have a have a bet yeah. in either, either camp. Well, I think Rosenberg, uh, David Rosenberg, what did he say? He said, you may as well just gamble. You may as well just put it all on black. Yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> any more questions for Martin, Danny? Uh, just uh, since we didn't touch on the Rio Tinto yes. results. Yeah. yeah. How were they? Yeah, look, um, Treated as a bit of a yawn in terms of the production because they pretty much hit guidance. Mm. What what stood out for me was the lack of production growth. Mm. So they're running flat out in the Pilbara. They they're increased. They're going to in, increase production by by you know less than two percent. So just on there, the the only thing really that's got growth. So if you look at 2023 actuals to 2024 guidance, you can see that you know iron ore is going to be the same. Bauxite's going to be lower, aluminum the same, aluminium the same. The only thing really is copper. So they're going to go from 620,000 tonnes to 660 to 720. So really good growth in copper, which we like and a lot of other people like. But outside of that, there's just no growth. So this is a big company. It generates a lot of cash flow. It's been paying great dividends, but you're not getting any growth. growth and you kind yeah. of, you want, you know, mining companies, you know, the depreciating assets, you want them exploring, you want them developing assets, you want them to giving you some growth. So the, the thing that's not on that slide, which is exciting, is the Simmendow iron ore. I was going um, to ask you about Guinea. Simmendow. So that's not in their guides. That's a massive, they're, they've committed 6.2 billion capex. But that. it's a while off, It's a while it? off, yeah. It's yeah. probably second half of this decade. It's a game changer for the market. It brings a whole bunch, bunch of high quality supply and it's going to push lower grade stuff like uh, Fortescue out, out the side. But I think, yeah, just when, if you're in Rio and you're expecting growth, you're not going to get it. It's almost like a dividend play, which is odd to say about a mining company. I was about to say, um, these uh, both BHP, Rio, they're going to have some pretty chunky dividends, aren't they? Because, you know, the, the iron ore price, OK, it's like US $120 a tonne. But hello, mm. nobody really thought yeah. it was, that's, that's after it's retreated. Yeah, that's right. And they're digging it out of the ground for 20 bucks a tonne. Yeah. So they're they are absolutely money. printing cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully we'll find out in February if that's passed on. Martin Crabb, thanks so much from Shaw & Partners. Well, let's have a quick look at the market leaders and also the laggards starting with the best performing stocks today. If we can find some wee bit nano up 4%, uh, Star Entertainment up 1.5%. Yeah, Charter Hall also had a broker upgrade today, which lending some support there to that stock. And let's have a look at the laggards and LaVisa up there at the top after that broker downgrade. Ansel uh, off by just over 4%, as is Seven Group and Champion Iron Ore and South 32. Uh, and off also by over four percent. Yeah, it had a quite a good run, I think, last week. So maybe coming off a little bit. Uh, hey, let's have a look at some of the small caps, small caps leaders. This is where it gets tricky, isn't it? Zip. Well, I was talking to Henry Jennings about Zip on, I think, Friday, because remember that was his Santa pick and it had rallied quite strongly above his target, then came back a little bit uh, today, up by about ten percent. 54 cents. Join Shield. I spoke to the CEO today. They had a good get day up by about 10%, 41 cents. And uh, Fluence leading the pack there, 12.5% gain. And some of the small cap laggards, Mind Mindax uh, off by 10.5%. Tambaran also 10.5%. And Aura Energy off by 8%. And uh, let's turn to the stock of the day, which was Rio Tinto and Rudy Filipek Van Dyke from FN Arena and Michael Gable of Fairmont Equities shared their verdict on the stock on today's call of the episode of the call. God, mouthful. <laughs> the whole the whole point about cyclicality is obviously is a, is a big question mark given that we are still uh, forecasting uh, slowing growth in mo most economies this year and in and, and, and struggling China. Yep. Sentiment does a lot. I mean, there's constantly the expectation. We, we're now seeing uh, still ongoing, underwhelming data from China. So the expectation still is that the Chinese will do whatever it takes to, uh, to support their economy. Um, I mean, if you're happy with taking, because it's all about taking risks, I mean, and mm. 
the likes of Rio Tinto and BHP, they tend not to disappoint in the same manner as some of those smaller iron ore miners or even just base metal miners or leave if markets head higher and, and, mar and investors take on more risk you get a lower US dollar yep. which is good for, for the commodities as well so I mean what could derail the iron ore price I mean it has been stronger than everyone expected could it be on the demand side I think the demand side will be there could there be a massive increase in supply I don't see where that could come from so I think the iron ore price will remain fairly elevated. I mean, in the short term, is it going to drop another five or ten dollars? That's that's impossible to know. So I'd be looking for a buying opportunity with Rio. I think the mm. way it's trading at the moment, yeah, maybe there's another couple of dollars downside. Yeah, you know, if you want to finesse the the share price, but ultimately, I think you know this pullback we've seen over the past few weeks will be okay. an opportunity. All right, let's get a quick check of what's happening overnight. Uh, looking ahead after Wall Street reopens from the public holiday, the Eurozone ZEW business confidence for January also coming through, which is a, a key one to show us, particularly when we're looking at more signs of Germany here skirting that technical recession. The US New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for Jan is due. And in terms of earnings, some of the big banks, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, we've also got Interactive Brokers and PNC Financial. And let's have a look at uh, what is on for tomorrow and of course we have the big China data dump with China fourth quarter GDP and industrial production for December as well as a production update from Evolution Mining. But not a good day today we are down as we've mentioned by 1.2 percent on the SIBO and also on the ASX 200 um, really just hard to find any positivity today the ASX 200 crossing below its 20 day moving average finishing down by 1.1 uh, percent 7,414 we mentioned La Visa and Ansel uh, the biggest drags. And as uh, Martin Crabb was saying, it looks like um, we did have weakness in European markets overnight and currently uh, the US mini futures are all trading down. And let's check on the Aussie dollar because that really was uh, reflecting the risk off tone that we saw in markets today. And that's currently trading down to around 66 spot 1.6 against the US dollar, which is around 0.66%. So risk off tone, but hey, Probably not unsurprising after, um, well, we did have such a strong run into, into, into the last uh, legs of 2023. Well, let's see what tomorrow brings because last week Danny was, you know, down, up, down, up all week. So yeah. more volatility potentially for Absolutely. Wednesday. We'll uh, be back bright and early from tomorrow. See you tomorrow.